a dying art, and it will probably <laughs> go when I go. What a venue. It is just a fish, a chap. Where can you go and do this? Unbelievable. I thought March was good through the town centre. This, this is second to none. Wag the fishing, this is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Look at those lovely little wagglers. And that's what I'll be fishing today on this short video, showing you what an art it is and a dying art. And probably when I've gone, it'll probably go with me. But I was brought up on canals and I love fishing this style here, where we're on the old Neen at Ramsey St Mary's and let's put them through the paces. Well here we are on the old River Neen at Ramsey St Mary on Ramsey Districts Club Water. Just to give you a little insight on what's a dying art really now, um, waggler fishing on these drains which is so important and can be so quicker than short lining on the pole, much quicker. Um, primarily we're going to catch rudd, Loose feeding pinky. I'll go through my setup and show you everything from hook to rod to reel. Um, we've got a busy road beyond us. That's the only thing here at uh, St Mary's. It's uh, one of the main roads through through the fens, getting to Peterborough. But it is absolutely full of rud at the moment. I fired a few pinkies and they were swirl they're swirling now. I haven't even started fishing, so I know it'd be a fisher chuck. So let's get on with it and see what we can catch. I'm going to put on two pinkies. One through the bum, one through the head. Absolutely solid. That one come off. And they're not small, but there's lots of small fish there, but there must be bigger fish as well. I'm not clipped up because I'm not casting to a feature, I'm just casting just in front of the hanging willow tree down there. Look at that, it's just a fish, a chuck. I plumbed up and I'm probably fishing a third of the depth, I'm probably fishing two foot. It's probably five foot out there, maybe six foot. But if you were shipping a pole back, you just cannot beat the speed of a waggler. Two or three wines. Look at that, two ounce rud is in my hand. Same pinkies, untouched. Must feed each cast though, very important, keep that feed, keep them feeding out there. Lovely fishing. Now some of you may say, Oh yeah, well it'd be quicker on the pole, I'll fish a whip to hand, but in general, because the weather's gone so mild, it's going to be like 14 to 16 degrees today, it's just really spun the fish into action. The road couldn't be any busier. <laughs> Oh, we've got the church bell now. Look at this, one a bun. Once again, two pinkies, one through the bum and one through the head. So important to keep 
the river mutt with loose feeding, those pinkest. Keep those fish feeding. You know, even if there's a strike out there from a pike or a big perch that tries to scatter the fish, there's so many there, just keep feeding and they're back on it straight away. Lovely way to fish. All these fish, all these rudd that I'm catching, I haven't caught one that's seen a hook before. So how many are in here? And we're just sitting on one part of the old knee on the drain here at Ramsey St Mary. And there's miles and miles of drain. This really is terrific fishing. This is absolutely one of bun. Apart with the noise, the road behind you, you don't even hear it. You guys watching this will, but when you're into the fishing, you don't even hear the traffic really. Look at that, what a lovely rod. Unbelievable fishing. I used to fish the canals back in the day when it was all squat, just before poles really took over. You know, everything was waggler and squat fishing on the Grand Union. It used to be fantastic. And learning that skill then is something that you know, I've always kept in my armoury, but it's amazing how well it works on these drains and how quick it can be. It is a lovely way to fish, but there's the right situations and wrong situations when to use it. It's just knowing when it's right. You just can't beat it. And when I couldn't ship out there and catch a rud as quick as this, it's amazing. And how quick is that? Awesome. Also, when the water's clear, if you've got a pole over the heads of the fish on the drains, you'll spook them. But with this, there's nothing. It's just the float landing. They're lovely fishing. Always makes me laugh to talk, talk to a lot of anglers on the bank and that. And in matches, and I've said to quite a few anglers before, I said, Oh, I'll set a little wagger up there, that would be. No, no, I haven't got one. So there's a lot of people who haven't even got a wagger rod. But what a way to fish. You know, don't get me wrong, there are some days where the pole is better than the waggler. And when you think the waggler will work, but having that up your sleeve to use, 
it's such a bonus. Also with the waggler, another advantage is I'm feeding the same spot all the time out there. But if I want to, I can cast around it. I mean, I'm not clipped up today because I'm not casting to some sedges or to a boat. Just cast into the front of the hanging willow there. There's so many fish here. This is where the weather's gone really mild. It's going to be maybe 16, perhaps 17 degrees today. That's unheard of, mid-Feb. Always feed in the same spot when I can cast all around it. The most important thing you know, your setup might be, not be quite right. You might not have the right waggler on or hook or the right rod for the job. But the most important thing in all aspects of fishing is this. That regular feeding. Because without that, those fish wouldn't be there feeding and you're not going to catch them. Remember back in the day on the canals with the squat fishing? Always the anglers that caught fish, the ones that fed regularly. All the guys I take out coating. The most important thing I try to get over to them is the feeding. A big pike strike over there, fish scattered everywhere then. Although this gets fish regularly here, I haven't caught a fish that has seen a hook before. Every fish has been mouth perfect. Shows how many are there. Hello, I reckon that's lost, that's a roach. I reckon that got lost. Probably thinks it's a rad. I just want to run you from your setup. Um, I'm using a Horizon Pro 13 foot one waggler, lovely rod, it's got lovely through action um, and it's just forgiving, you need a rod that's forgiving because you're striking a little fish in 08 to 010 hook lengths, you want something that's nice and soft that absorbs the strike if you do a, a hefty strike and gives you a bit of play when winding them in, gives you a little bit of action. You don't want a stiff rod, it's no good whatsoever, because fishing light lines will just bump your fish and you can break your hook lengths. Uh, reel line, four pound, our horizon model filament, um, loaded onto one of their new HX Pro 4000 reels. Um, the bigger spool just gives you um, easier casting. The smaller the spool, 
the more you have to thrash a little float out. The bigger the spool, the better the casting. And as you can see, loaded properly right to the lip. Put a lot of backing on there and then bring it right to the lip so it just glides off the spool. So you can use lighter, smaller floats. Uh, hook length, I've got a four inch hook length of 08 to an 18 hook. Nice silver, one of the new hooks we bring out that I'm just sampling, just trying out. And I've got a cubed shot. And rather than sometimes on the drains using 11s, even 12s sometimes, what I've got is 10s because it gives me a quicker indication on my float, which we'll talk about in a moment. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of their cube shot tens there. Reason being that I know on the count of four, my float, if I just demonstrate to you, when I cast out it's to there, and on the count of one, two, three, four, it'll put it down. On the count of one, two, three, that's still there, I've got a fish on. So I'm not looking for it to go under, the fish is on. So that full of those number tens, which I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down there, that full gives me indication on the float that a fish is holding it up. That's very important. I'm fishing in and around my feed. Like I said, I've set the float, I'm probably, it's probably two foot, two and a half foot, and the swim's probably five to six foot deep. If I go any deeper, I'll be waiting a lot longer to see the indication. And if I go any shallower, I won't get that slight fall through my feed. If I go too shallow, it's too abrupt into the feed. I want a slow fall, and that count of three, four, I've got a fish on. Float I'm using there, it's a little Drake float, little peacock with a little fine bristle insert. Um, size, I think it's two and a half BB. So, obviously, if there's wind in that, I've got an adapter on there, I can just pull it off and put a heavier one on. Uh, you don't want to thrash the float, but you want a float that lands nicely without trying to make it get there. This is get, I'm getting comfortable, but if I was fishing to the far bank, I'd put a slightly heavier one on. But that, that's the same. Set up very simple, four pound main line, 08 hook length, 010 maximum I'd use, nice soft rod, the Horizon Pro, 13 foot one, nice through action, and the line's not too heavy. It's no good using six pound main line because it'd be hard to cast. So the final line, the better, I think four pounds of fine balance between that and your hook lengths. Well, I'll demonstrate now the counting in my mind. I cast the float out, I've fed, I've got to two, three, four, and the fish is on because it hasn't weighted up. Now the art of that is, it just gives you more time fishing and catching fish because if I'm waiting for the float to go under, it can be 10 seconds. And I'm gaining there four seconds of fish which over the course of five hours, if you're getting a fish a put, it's a lot more fish in the net. But that's just, I just naturally do it, it's just in my mind, I know, I cast the float out, I've cast it out again, checked it, in my mind I've got to two, three, four, it did go under that time, but I missed it. But that, I would have, if the float hadn't weighted up, I knew a fish was on. So I cast out again, in my mind, two, three, four, and it's still up, and the fish is on. But it just, it just comes natural to me. I don't even I just know just the time. By the time I've fed, put my catapult down. Yeah, that's shot under them, but. Three, four, fish on. Obviously it depends on the depth. Obviously if you're slightly deeper, if you're slightly deeper or slightly shallower, the count would be less. 
And to find that out, if I lay it with no bait on, if I just flick the float out, tighten it up, which I do at the start, and my mind, two, three, four, and the float's weighted up. If it might be two, three, four, five, six, and the float's, float's weighted up, then I know a count of six when I go out, if I'm fishing deeper. Very important, that. Put more fish in the net in the course of a match. And some people say, oh, I'll never see you have a bite. Well, I haven't had a bite, I just know the fish has held it up. And if it's not a fish, it'd be weed. Oh, you've lost a shot. <laughs> Lovely way of fishing. Well, this is absolutely awesome. I mean, a rudder chuck. I've had three, nearly four in a minute, and, and that's on the waggler. Definitely three in a minute. Been fishing three hours, and I would say, well, over, there's well over 20 pounds in the net. Absolutely incredible. The weather's unbelievable as well. It's so warm. Where can you go and do this? Unbelievable. Oh, look, that's a bleak. That must be lost. Thinks it's a rud. But the most important thing, I've stepped up the feed now. I'm probably putting in 20 pinkies. Kept it in, in the same spot. Oh, look, a little fish down there. It's black with them. Another thing very important, how I cast. Well, on Kakan did I cast, it's the same spot each time and I feather it in. So that hook goes past my float, all straightened out. Look at that. Beautiful fish, absolutely beautiful. There must be so many fish there. But they've been built up by this regular feeding. All different sizes, you know, fish ranging from an ounce to six ounce. I've had some clanking rud. But very important. Getting the rhythm, cast, I feather it in, so I stop it, the hook bait goes past the flow, feed, pick up, I count in my mind and I've got a fish on. Remember that count of four I've got for the float to weight up and if it hasn't, something's stopped the drop shot from giving me the telltale on the float. Cast, feather it in, feed, Three, four, fish on. And they're really having it. Some, well, a lot of them you have to disgorge. And I've only caught one rud that I think has seen a hook before. Its mouth looked a little bit. There's so many fish in this drain system. Look at this, unbelievable, unbelievable. Look at them, ravenous. I know the weather's out the last four or five days, it's gone really mild. And 
today think you know maybe 16 17 degrees today which is unheard of middle of february but the most important thing feed cast count your drop shot down fish on absolutely incredible I hope you're enjoying it because I'm absolutely loving it. Wonderful fishing. Little tiny one there. Very important knowing how long it takes your float to wait up and for fish has intercepted your bait. Same as when you're pole fishing. Just eliminate dead time. If I cast this wag around and I was waiting for it to go under each time, I'd have half the amount of fish I've caught. Right, well I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna cast out and I'm going to strike when the waggler goes under. So I've fed in one, three, four. It's still not gone under, it went to go under. I know a fish is on there now. It's a little tiny fish. The float was never going to go under because it had just held it up. But I'll count this time until the float goes under but the fish was on there immediately. I've cast out in my mind. Two, three, four. I know a fish is on, but I'm waiting now for the float to go under. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It's not gonna go under, but the fish is on, look. And not a little fish. So it's so important. I'd have probably had another fish by the time I've caught this one fish. Well, I would have done. And that was right in the back of its throat. It was hard to disgorge it out of it. So back to my normal way of fishing. I've cast it out in my mind. The float's rated up. Two, three, four fish on. Look, how much quicker is that? It's all about knowing in your mind what's happening below your float. No good sitting there waiting for it to go under. Three, four, that went under on the four. Two, three, four, see, fish on. The float hadn't gone under, but it should have waited up. Look at that lovely rod. Let's have a look what we've got in the net and wrap it up. Well, there we are, three hours on the waggler, 25, 30 pound of rod there. One a bung, sometimes three, nearly four in a minute on the wagon. That's incredible. The weather's been fantastic. I hope you enjoy the video. And just remember all those little tips in there because they're so important. Let's get these back in the river.